I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. I swam up on the devil's lake, but never, 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 never. Make that same mistake. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is from a new name we've never heard of before, but the Chinese company assures us they've been an OEM manufacturer of famous brands for decades. Plus, they claim they are a family-owned business and have spent two years developing prototypes, throwing out many, many pens to bring us a fantastic product. If you believe that hype, then you probably believe that Bobby of Bobby Pens is his real name, or Sally of Easy Buy on Etsy is her real name. I actually bought this pen from Sally's Easy Buy on eBay. But this fountain pen is a new model vacuum filler from China and inquiring minds need to know how good it is and whether it's worth the $40 US I paid for it. This is the Asvine V169 water drop skeleton piston filler. And yeah, I bought mine even though everyone else seemed to get one for free for review, but I won't let that color my judgment at all. No sorry, Bobby. Nope. But I do have some issues with this pen and with the hype. So let's dive into it right now. I was trying to think of something pithy to say, something interesting to say about this pen before I open it, but unfortunately I haven't got a freaking clue what this is. You see I've had four or five things that are sitting in Calgary since, one of them since December 31st. Uh, so a couple of weeks been sitting in Calgary waiting to be delivered and this one came today and I don't know which one it is and it doesn't help that my address isn't on this anywhere. My postal code was and the tracking number and everything but my address isn't here anywhere. Interesting. Maybe that's why it took so long to come to me. Well, let's open it up and find out what it is. Maybe it was in customs so long because the border guards had such difficulty getting into it. So here we are. The Asveen comes in a nice box. Write and record your good life. V169. And the nib is a fine. So let's open it up and see. Comes in a box that's uh, typical of Moon Man actually, but it has Asveen right there. I don't know whether I'm saying that correctly or not, but I'm going to say Asvine rather than Asvine. Asvine sounds like a tattoo to me. Let's open this up. And there's the pen and an instruction manual. And it's in English. Look at that. That's good. So it shows cartridge, piston, and cleaning and maintenance. Fairly small family operated business selling producing fountain pens since 2005. Rigid foam box and the pen in its condom and there it is. Well, okay this is much more impressive than the photos. Um, I thought it was a silvery kind of a look but this metal is surprising me immediately because it is much darker than I expected. It's almost graphite looking and it's substantial. This is a substantial fountain pen. And there's my number six fine nib. It is a vacuum filler. So I'll be very interested to clean this out and put it through its paces. The Asveen V169 vacuum filler. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. But just as I pressed record to do this video review, my doorbell rang and this arrived. I'm using the white gloves because it came from Applebaum 
And this is my pen to celebrate my 1 million views on my YouTube channel. This is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande. And it is the Dutch Pen Show Limited Edition. Jonathan Brooks Acrylic. And the acrylic is called Earth Magic 2. I had to give you a preview of this because look at this. This is incredible. And there is the gold nib. Incredible. Beautiful pen. So I can't wait to ink this up and do a review of this beautiful pen. But on to the Asvine. Maybe I should leave the gloves on because this is quite the fingerprint magnet, this pen. But before we look at this pen, let's take a look at some interesting elements of this pen's marketing packaging and retail naming. Now I showed you the packaging uh, and documentation for this pen in the unboxing, but let's take another look at the box. So here's the box and you can see that it looks very, very similar to another manufacturer's box. This one is Moon Man and they are, what do you know, identical. You could say, well, they're using the same outsourced supplier for boxes. But if you look at Doodlebud's review of the Asvine, his came in a box that actually said Moon Man on it. Mm-hmm, the thought plickens. Then there is the Asvine Amazon store. This is something I've seen on eBay and especially on AliExpress. Some of these virtual storefronts have started naming Chinese brands after their own store name. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So pardon myself for interrupting myself. Allow myself to introduce myself. But while I was editing this video, I went to Amazon to get a screen capture of the Asvine shop and lo and behold, it is gone. Kaput finito. It seems to be replaced by the Langjivi, I don't know how to pronounce that, pen store, where the Hongdian Matte Black Forest Pen is now called the Asvin Matte Black Forest Pen. So curiouser and curiouser, said Alice as she fell down the rabbit hole. So if you look at Bobby's AliExpress store called St. PPS Chinese Pen Store, he sells this Majon T5 piston filler as, quote, St. Pen PPS T5 Fountain Pen Metal Ink Pen Fine Nib Piston Filler Stationary Office School Supplies Writing. Kind of trips off the tongue, doesn't it? I'm uh, Harvey Manfred Jensen. I'm uh, with the CIA. My father was in the Secret Service, Mr. Manfred Jensen, and I know perfectly well that you don't keep the general public informed when you are debriefing KGB defectors in a safe house. Oh, you don't, huh? Not unless you're congenitally insane or irretrievably stupid, no. So I guess I'm not surprised that an Amazon storefront is selling Asvine Hongdian ink cartridges. But why would a family-owned OEM manufacturer of famous brand fountain pens be selling Hongdian, Manjon, Hero, Jinhao, Duke, Keiko, Kaigalu, Picasso, as well as some interesting cross-brands like how about an Asvine Hongdian Black Forest, or a five-pack of Asvine Keiko gel pens. Remember last year, or maybe it was two years ago, when Hongdian was the new old fountain pen maker out of China? They claimed they had decades of experience as an OEM manufacturer of some famous pen brands. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? With all this brand switching and name changing between manufacturers from China, it can get very confusing indeed. And I think that's the point. There are two Wing Songs, now called Yong Shen in some places, and they are both owned by Hero, but they are different companies. Have I lost you yet? Then we have Moon Man, which seems to blend its brand with Delike, and now shares its packaging with Asvine. And then we have Hongdian and Keiko, which are now interchangeable with Asvine. That's some family-owned business there. So from now on, for me, all Chinese brands are Hero the State Fountain Pen Company of the People's Republic of China. Some will be good, some will be okay, and some will be awful. 
but none of them are little family-owned pen shops with fathers and sons working for five years on the design of a special pen. I don't believe it for a second, with one exception, Pen BBS. Although some Chinese companies have tried to copy their designs, I'm looking at you, Ling Mo Lorelei, Pen BBS has remained fiercely independent and I will continue to consider them a small independent fountain pen designer and manufacturer of quality fountain pens out of China. So let's take a look at this new design from this new family owned pen company. Overall, the pen is very shiny and heavy. At 53 grams, it's in the territory of this Asvine M1000 and only two grams lighter than the Asvine World Civilizations. The pen is chromed brass over acrylic and is very reminiscent of another pen that I recently reviewed. And that is this Laban Skeleton. But the Skeleton is a full 16 and a half grams lighter than the Asvine. The exoskeleton of brass is stamped with patterns that we are told are done by hand and each pen is different. I bet the stamping machine is operated by hand pushing a big red button and then there are dies that stamp out various patterns uh, that don't always match up pen to pen but I doubt each one of these pieces is cut by hand. Not for a $40 pen. Some of the edges of the stamped design have a bit of a rough feeling but nothing sharp or uncomfortable. The transparent blue acrylic seen through the chrome design makes the pen very attractive. From the top we see a large heavy chrome brass cap finial that probably adds about 10 grams to the weight of the cap. The cap is straight until the end where the blue acrylic curves down to the barrel. The clip is a nice minimalist design and is fairly stiff but it's usable. But my clip dresses left, like most of the Asvine V169s that I've seen in reviews, whether the reviewers have noticed or not. My OCD has noticed this immediately. I go around the house straightening pictures, so this drives me crazy. And then we have Asvine stamped in a script into the bottom of the cap band. There is a tiny step down to the barrel, which is straight all the way to the end. And then we have the tapering piston knob, which is also chromed brass with a slightly domed end. The cap unscrews, if you're lucky, uh, because most of the time it unscrews the section. And if you don't immediately notice the difference, you'll have an inky mess in your lap. We mm. tend to forget the mm. simple pleasures. Mm. And the basis for true happiness. Mm. But yes. So my advice is not to screw this cap on too tight as it will be an accident waiting to happen. But when the cap unscrews with one and about a quarter turn, it reveals a concave chromed brass section and a number six size steel nib. The big blocky threads here are very smooth and the section is very comfortable in my grip. I'm not fond of metal sections uh, especially chromed metal section, but this one has a nice deep uh, concave curve to it that keeps the pen from slipping in my hand. To those of you with clammy hands, you might want to avoid this pen. Actually, the entire pen is a fingerprint magnet. I wouldn't mind seeing this design in a powder-coated textured aluminum. I think it would be cool. Let's take a closer look at this nib. There is some nice scroll work and a large script F for fine and the name Asvine all etched in nice deep lines. Some laser etching is very light and makes the nib look cheap, but this is a nice fine engraving. The nib and the feed are friction fit and not part of an unscrewable nib unit. And there is the plastic feed. The section unscrews for access to the ink chamber and for cleaning and maintenance. And this is a good thing because piston and vacuum fillers with non-removable sections are a pain to clean. This way you can pour out any remaining ink, rinse the ink chamber with a syringe, and uh, clean out the section as an individual unit. It's much, much faster. And this is a nice touch right here. The section's nozzle is the same transparent acrylic as the inside of the barrel and the cap. So you have the acrylic threads on acrylic threads. Plus there's a silicone o-ring right here to keep the ink from leaking. A little silicone grease on these 
threads and on that uh, silicone o-ring would be recommended as well but if the section's nozzle is acrylic why not make the entire section acrylic then if you change the piston knob to acrylic as well you'd probably shed about four or five grams in weight now to the filling system the vacuum filler works by creating a vacuum inside the barrel and using that vacuum to suck up ink so you unscrew the piston knob and retract the rod then you place the nib of the pen in the ink up to the filler hole which is back here so you need ink deep enough to get that pen in there and then you push the rod back down again and when you push that rod back down it creates a negative pressure behind the piston rod back in here and then when that piston reaches the end the chamber inside there widens out a bit to release that vacuum and it sucks liquid up into the ink chamber simple principle not always simple in practice and since I just got this bottle of Leonardo blue with my new Momento Zero Grande I might as well fill it up with this ink try to do it here on camera without making a mess so we retracted the rod we're going to dip the nib into the ink up to the filler hole and then we're going to press down on the rod but a key thing here is to not push the nib down into the glass and then press down on that because you can damage that nib so you need to hold the pen into the ink by the barrel and then press the rod down you can hear those bubbles and the ink runs up into the pen that looked like a fairly good fill screw the knob back down again clean off your nib and you're ready to write and there you can see the ink sloshing around inside there the other key thing is that there's a little stopper right there that blocks the ink from flowing so you have to unscrew the back of the knob to allow the ink to flow if you're writing with this pen and you find that you're running out of ink remember duh you got to open that little valve to allow it to flow that shut off valve is very valuable to keep the pen from squirting ink into your pocket when there's an air temperature change or an air pressure change if you want to get more ink into that chamber a second stroke in the ink will generally fill the chamber up quite well the inside of the cap shows a small ledge milled into the acrylic that mates with the end of the section to seal the nib from drying out this cap goes on the end of the pen but it doesn't stay secure so I'd say this pen doesn't post and with a cap that's over 20 grams it's back weighting that pen anyway the pen is plenty long enough in the hand as it is unposted and the pen isn't unbalanced too badly actually if that piston knob had less metal in it it'd probably be balanced a little bit better but it's not back weighted I bought this pen on eBay for $37.69 including shipping and now before we look at some size comparisons I previously recorded a video where I show how to disassemble this pen so let's look at that video and then I'll be back with some size comparisons since this is a new vacuum filler we need to find out how to take it apart so I thought I'd take a moment and see whether it will come to pieces for me this is the tool for removing the piston and or vacuum mechanism from a Wingsong 699 and it tends to fit a lot of Asian pens so I thought I'd give it a try on this one so first off let's take the cap off there is a screw in there that comes out I've taken it out it's just a slot screw but I can't get that finial off so let's take the section off there we go and the nib is friction fit so I'm going to remove that by putting a little bit of rubber matting around the shoulders and a little bit more matting for the slippery section and then this is a little tip I learned from one of Brian Goulet's videos when you pull don't just pull aside like this push your knuckles together and give it some leverage and it pulls right out there we go now the business end we unscrew the piston knob and we slide the piston out you notice that that bit spins it actually becomes really a nice little fidget spinner there's little flats right there you see that on both sides 
and that's where you can put a wrench and let's see if this wrench fits it and it does not so we have to get ourselves a small crescent wrench and you put the flats of the spanner or the crescent wrench on those flats of the screws and you give it a turn once it's turning you can actually do the rest by hand and there's the vacuum piston mechanism you notice that it has a little stopper at this end and that goes up against that bit there to plug it so that you've got a stop valve to prevent the pen from leaking due to air pressure changes so while we've got it apart I'm going to put a little silicone grease on that little rubber seal on the piston and it never hurts to put a little grease on the rod and on those o-rings right there as well and put the whole mechanism back together again so, hand tight and just make it snug there we go just a little bit of a turn and you'll hear the vacuum release that's a good noise then we want to silicone grease this little o-ring here a little bit and those threads just a little dabble do you and we can put that part together again so with clean hands well, that looks a little red doesn't it look at that can we get a little water on a q-tip here hmm so maybe this nib has been qc'd interesting the best way to fit these together is to put the feed and the nib together so that the shoulders of the feed match up to the slope of the nib and then I just grab it at that point and there's a key on the back of this feed it's flat and there's the flat part in the collar line them up and just give it a push and we are ready for ink and here is the Asvine V169 water drop vacuum filler with a LeBain skeleton a pen BBS 456 vacuum filler a Pelican M800 piston filler and a Majon Delike Asvine Hero T5 Aurora like piston filler now let's look at them posted and here they are posted of course the Asvine V169 doesn't post but when I was taking that cap off just now this now full of ink that section unscrewed and it took me a bit of doing to get that cap off without releasing all that ink the Pelican M800 is the best poster of the group and probably the best pen of the group as well now the LeBan doesn't have the original nib on it that's an italics brand broad cursive italic nib the Aurora sorry I mean the Asvine Majon T5 you'll note has a really nice ink window I'll be reviewing this pen shortly currently it has the Bobby calligraphy nib on it now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Asvine V169 and it has a fine steel nib check the wetness it's relatively wet not too bad and the ink today is Leonardo blue as to line variation well you can squeeze a little bit out of it but it's very stiff and this line that the pen is making is between 0.4 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters in thickness which makes it a western fine or a Japanese fine to medium 
and for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Actually, that's relatively smooth and it keeps up and you get a slightly thinner line. That's very good. So this pen is nicely smooth for a fine nib. Very nice. And some quick writing. No issues with that feed keeping up whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well first let me say what I like about it. The nib is great. It is smooth and wet. The little remnant of ink I found under the nib was evidence that the nibs might be getting some attention before they go into the box. So kudos to Asvine for some Chinese quality control. And kudos also for the English documentation and the pen in the hand unposted is nicely balanced and comfortable. It's a bit hefty in the hand at 35 and a half grams unposted, but for those of you who like substantial pens, it feels great. The section is comfortable and because of the nice concave shape, it doesn't slip. The vacuum mechanism is well built and works flawlessly. I almost got a complete fill with the first stroke and I like how it can remove the section and get to the ink chamber for cleaning. Overall, the pen is great to look at and I'm glad I got the darker blue because I think the contrast is really nice. This pen comes in six varieties. The gold version is now back in stock at Etsy as of this review and it's available in two acrylics, clear and gray blue. The chrome version is available in clear, gray blue, blue and green. As to my concerns about this pen, well, the section coming off when uncapping the pen is a biggie for me. Right after advising all of you to be careful about uncapping the pen, I went to uncap it for the size comparisons and the section unscrewed on me. Thankfully I stopped before it came apart. The other concern to me is the weight. The cap alone is 20 grams. I would really like to see this pen in an aluminum version. That would be really cool. And finally, regarding the hype. Perhaps I'm cynical. Okay, yes, I'm cynical. But over-the-top boilerplate of family-owned, decades in the business, thousands of prototypes scrapped, just rubbed me the wrong way. Here's an example. The Asvine V169 is inspired by the Doric architecture of the Greek temple, and the golden ratio make the pen look more generous. The skeleton is cut out from a solid tube of brass, that requires more than 30 manual operations to reach the final base of the design. The surface of the skeleton are treated in a chrome coating. Each of the iridium nib was polished, aligned, and tested manually to ensure they write smoothly and flow easily. The piston filling stick was made of durable stainless steel. It was equipped with multiple strong O-rings to prevent ink leakage and ensure filling easily. Every process is completed by craftsmen who have been in the pen industry for more than 20 years. Add to that the mixture of brands, especially on their own Amazon storefront and their packaging, and it makes me feel like they are not dealing honestly with the customer. Pen BBS doesn't get all gushy about their decades of research, hand engraved nibs, new innovative models, and filling systems. In fact, there's Nothing. Nothing. No action. Dullsville. From Pen BBS, but their products. Some happy medium would be nice. The best advice is caveat emptor, buyer beware. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is. That being said, this is a very nice fountain pen with some minor flaws, but well worth the $40 US, even with the hype, in my opinion. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. 
And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month, less than the price of a coffee. And I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.